everybody. First off, I'm Natalie. I'm super excited because I get to teach you reading today. Uh, most of the time you guys see me just for science. So I'm super excited, but I want to say this. I want to switch over into a science mindset for a minute, and I want to make sure that you are weather aware today. Remember when we talked about weather and natural disasters, you have to stay safe during um, tornado warnings and tornado watches. So one way to stay safe is to be weather aware, watching the weather, making sure you can hear alerts, hear alarms, and things like that. Next, you need to make sure that your family has a safe spot, whether you go to a tornado shelter, you go to your basement, you go to your storm shelter, or if you don't have any of those things, I want you to go to the room on the lowest floor of your house towards the center. Then on top of all of that, I want you to make sure you have some type of head covering, headgear to wear. It could be an old baseball, like a batting helmet. It could be an old um, football helmet, a motorcycle helmet, a bicycle helmet, something that's going to keep your head safe. And also, I want to make sure that you guys have hard sole shoes on. If you don't have boots or rain boots, I want you to make sure that you at least have your tennis shoes somewhere close by. Do not go to your safe spot with your sock feet, your house slippers on, or bare feet. Um, I'm notorious for wanting to walk around barefooted. Um, do not do that today, okay? All right, all of that being said, I want you to stay safe. Make sure that your parents can hear alarms, whether it's on their phone or a weather radio or the TV, okay? All right, and we hope to see you guys on Thursday. All that together safe. So, now we're going to switch gears back to reading. So, we've been talking about sequencing, and we've talked about how sequ with sequencing is how one thing links to another, and then that links to another and links to another, right? We talked about this in science, and last week we focused more on science-based texts. So when we were talking about science-based texts and whenever we talk about um, fiction texts where, you know, it's a made-up story, uh, most of the time we have really pushed for you guys to look for signal words, right? And you should be looking for signal words like, you ready? Fancy, huh? <laughs> you should be looking for signal words like first, next, then, finally. There's tons of others. But... Today's text and the rest of the week, we're going to be focusing more on history text. And in history text, you're going to see some signal words, but you're also going to see dates. That could be days, months, or even years, or specific date. It could be a specific day of the month of the year. So you have to make sure that you are aware of being able to point out signal words, whether they are the normal signal words like we've been using, or if they are now a form of signal words that are exact dates. And so I'm going to do that in green. You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Exact dates. All right. So now we have exact dates in addition to all of our other signal words. I know, take a breath. You're good. Okay, so you should have brought this page home. If you didn't, parents, guess what? Your child left something probably in their desk. I'm sorry, bear with us. This is your remote learning page that we handed you, each one of us, and said, this is your remote learning work. Be sure you have this. You're gonna need to bring this back on Thursday. I think that's what we all said. All right. Anyways, off of my <clears throat> soapbox. So, this story is called Adventures of the Growing Nation. So, here's the deal. If you have not read this through once, I want you to hit pause. By now, you should have read it, right? Okay. So, if you hadn't read it, I want you to hit pause, read it, and then come back. Okay. Bing. Let's fast forward. Now, you're good. Okay. You should have read it once. When we read a nonfiction passage one time, we're going to get a good bit of the information, but we may not get all of it. We always need to reread, especially if we are having to look for specific things, um, especially to answer some questions like we're going to do in a minute. But the first thing, it says down here, if you already did this, then you're a step ahead of the game. But it said close reader habits. And that close reader habit said underlying signal words that tell you the order in which events happened. Think about how those events are related. 
So we talked just for a second ago about how not every piece of hist you know, history text that we're going to read is going to have the signal words that we're used to. We may be looking for some of these guys, some exact dates. So I'm going to give you the first, like, kind of get you started, and then I want you to hit pause again, and I want you to look and see if you can find any other ones because they may help us whenever we fill out our chart later, okay? So I want you to look very closely in paragraph number three, okay? And I'm taking you all the way to paragraph number three. If you haven't paid attention, this, these paragraphs are numbered on the side, okay? So paragraph number three. First off, I see the word, okay, to get ready, they first had a large boat built. Okay, dude, underlining the word first. Psh, duh. Okay, the boat took the men down the Ohio River. Ah, oh, then. Then they built a base camp near St. Louis. Okay, then. Bam, underlining that one. Look, beep, right there. Do, 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 do. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Winter of 1803? We think. It's given me not what day of the month, but it's given me the exact season and it's given me the exact year, right? Okay, let's underline. Winter of 1803. Okay. Fin finally! It's our word. Okay, finally. On May 14th, 1804, duh, that is a straight up exact date. Boom, underlining that. Lewis and Clark began their famous trip into the new territory. 59 went with them. Oh, oh my gracious. In one paragraph, we found all of that information. I want you to hit pause now, and I want you to go through the rest of it from paragraph one all the way down, and I want you to underline anytime you see a signal word or an exact date. And remember, it doesn't have to be month, day, year. It might say the season in the year. It might just say the year. It might just say the season. Okay? I want you to go through and do that right now. So hit pause. All right. Yay! We're unpaused. Okay, you should have done that now. So I want us to look at the other side. We're going to the right-hand side of your page. And our Explorer question says this. What happened after the United States bought land from France? So what happened? Well... They buy all this land, and what happens? I mean, President Tom Jefferson, he didn't have a clue, like, what was out there. So, what did he need to do? He needed to figure out what was out there, right? Okay. So, now we're going to go down to finally get to this chart part. And this is where our the nitty-gritty of our information is coming from today. So, it says, reread the text to find out the events of Lewis and Clark's journey. List those events in the graphic organizer. Okay. I want to point out something. I want us to stop for a minute. It's already, somebody read my paper. Kind of. <laughs> so they already filled in first, and they wrote in, President Jefferson asks Meriwether Lewis to explore the new land. Well, when I look back in the text, it doesn't really say first. In paragraph number two, this is what it says. Jefferson wanted to know the fastest way across the new land. At the, at the time, there were no maps of the whole country. Jefferson asked Meriwether Lewis to explore the area. Lewis was an army captain whom Jefferson trusted. Lewis chose another soldier, William Clark, to help him lead the party. I didn't hear the word first in there, did you? Then how did we, did we just figure that out? Yeah. Sometimes, first, the first event is not going to specifically say, this happened first. It's going to be implied, which means we should figure it out. We should be able to kind of read between the lines and say, oh, <laughs> duh, that's what happened first. Um, so now let's go on. It says winter 1803. I'm going to give you a hint. We've already underlined, or we should have already underlined signal words, whether they were signal words or exact dates, in our text. This should be easy for us to go back and skim and look for where it says winter of 1803, okay? I want you to go back and look in the text, and I want you to figure out what happened in the winter of 1803. You should be looking, to give you a hint, to help you out, you should be looking in paragraph number three. 
I'm hoping that at this point you've already found that they spent the winter of 1803, it says there. If you put they spent the winter there in that box, all four of us is going to come and get you. Where is there? Guys, come on. There, in the sentence before that, it says, Then they built a base camp near St. Louis, Missouri. They spent the winter of 1803 there. Where did they spend the winter? In St. Louis. Okay. So, they spent the winter in St. Louis is what I'm going to write in this box. Next, May 1804. All right, I should have this underlined. Let me see. Ooh, still in paragraph number three. What did they do in May of 1804? Well, I mean, it tells me. They spent um, the winter of 1803 there. Finally, on May 14th, 1804, Lewis and Clark began their famous trip into the new territory. They began their trip. They began their journey. They began their path. I don't know. Any of those. Yeah, they began their, their journey. They began their, you know, that trip into the new territory. All right, so we've got winter. We've got May. Okay. November, 1805. All right. 1805. Okay. We're out of paragraph number three. I think we're going to have to go somewhere else because we're looking for November, 1805. Oh, I see it. Do you see it? You should be looking at paragraph number four. Where did... Lewis and Clark end up in November of 1805. The Pacific Ocean, right? It says, they traveled for over 18 months. Finally, the group made it to the Pacific Ocean. On November 7th, 1805, Clark wrote, Ocean in View, Oh the Joy. All right, so they made it to the Pacific Ocean. All right. Now, last one, September 1806. <laughs> September 1806. Well, in paragraph number four, I had March 1806 underlined. Is that what I'm looking for? No. It says September 1806. Just because it had the same year does not give me the same information. It's not going to tell me the same thing. Keep going and see if we can find September 1806. <laughs> Very nice paragraph. Lewis and Clark arrived in St. Louis in September 1806. Last box, they arrived in St. Louis. If you wanted to pick, they arrived back in St. Louis, you could do that too, because that's where they started, and then that's where they came back to. All right. Um, whenever we, this next part says, reread paragraphs two, three, and four, and talk with the partner about how the events in those paragraphs are related. Well, you probably don't have a partner sitting at home with you, but what you can do is we can kind of talk. We can kind of think things through. So paragraphs two, three, and four all had something kind of in common. What do they have in common? How are they related? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Is that kind of like the whole journey? Yeah, basically. So they're related by telling you this sequence of the journey, right? Now, granted, the first part of paragraph five tells us that they arrived back, so we could kind of lump in two, three, four, and first sentence of paragraph five. But that's the bulk of the sequence, the bulk of the chain, how it linked together of Lewis and Clark's adventure, okay? All right, this last part. You don't have to write anything down, but I want you to think about this. What are the important events in the journey of Lewis and Clark? Include details from paragraphs 3 and 4 and 5 in your answer. Use space provided, blah, blah, blah. We don't have the space, but I just want you to think about this. So whenever we talk about the important events of the journey, the important events of the journey are going to be our sequence words, right? Our signal words. They're going to help us to figure out the important points because everything that you put in this little chart right here these are your important parts. These are the main parts of that sequence, that order of events, okay? The more that we get into reading history sequence, you're going to have to look for how this 
made this happen. And whenever we got to this part, then we were able to do this. Because history is building, right? And we need to make sure that we're looking for signal words, but also looking for those exact dates to be able to help us with the history text. Okay? All right, guys. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of the day, that you stay safe, and that um, you are one step closer to becoming a sequence king or queen. I don't know. Um, that you are understanding sequencing just a little bit better um, now that we know that we also need to include the exact dates in what we are focusing on. All right, guys, I miss you. Wish we were in class. Oh, little plug for Readathon. If you've not turned in your Readathon forms or your donation money, be sure to bring it tomorrow, um, Thursday, because uh, the candy claw is coming. And remember, for every $20 donation, get that grab in the candy claw and get to have some fun with that. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Bye.